<laughs> have you been surprised at the outpouring, the people hurt, wounded, heartbroken, that your thing, the beautiful thing you guys created, they heard the news that you guys were breaking up, and it seems like a whole lot of people were crestfallen. That must have been moving to you. I, yo, it, wa it was, but I wasn't. I, I, I'm going to say I was surprised by the amount of coverage that it got. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to like the the people, the individual fans, I I kind of knew. I was just like, this is, you know what I mean? Like this is gonna, you know, like still stay engaged. I, I stay engaged on Twitch, on everything. Shout out to the bodega I have. I'm riding with you for life. <clears throat> but I was just like, you know, like I wasn't surprised because the last episode, if you remember, not the the last interview on the Vice show was with Mike Francesa you know, the Pope, you know what I mean? Like if you're a New Yorker, you know, Mike Francesa. So he said something that really has stuck with me to this day. He's like, when you do a podcast, when you do radio and you can speak to this, Dan, Stu Gatz, the whole gang, when you do radio, people develop a different relationship with you than if you're just like, you know, the guy, the sexy guy on Grey's Anatomy, you know what I mean? Like it's a different thing. Cause you're Dan, you're not playing a character, you know what I'm saying? So People become, you know, kind of involved in like your life. They saw my kid, like they saw Victor throw confetti on me when I found out that our last child was going to be a girl. So, you know what I mean? Like these people are kind of like part of your life. And, you know, at the live shows, people would be like, hey, I got matching tattoos. We've got matching tattoos when we got married of like, you know, our art symbol. You know what I mean? I'm just like, okay. So, you know, there's definitely like, I've, like shout out to, again, shout out to the Bodega Hive, like the super diehard fan base. <laughs> And yeah, man, like I like. But if you put I, enough out there, they feel like they know you. You're right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you know what I mean? So it's, yes. Yeah. So it's like you know, it's it's good and it's bad because it's like you know what I mean. You can't really, you kind of have to stay in this lane, or, or stay in this lane and do other stuff. But you know, the good thing about it is that you know you got people that really that it's not fans; they're supporters. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever you do, like there's support. You know what I mean? So, like, I was really glad to have them calling in on a Sunday, like at 8 a.m. Eastern, being like, yo, what what is the tire strategy? And I'm like, all right, let me break it down to you. <laughs> <laughs> if it's hot, you want you don't want to be on sauce too long if it's hot. You know what I mean? Because the, you're going you're gonna to shred your tires, bro. You know what I mean? It's, it's about temperature. It's about grip. It's about track conditions. It's about racecraft. You know what I'm saying? If you I, use and, one and that code feels good. word, mixing like a degradation in there, and all of a sudden they think you're an expert. Bang. You know what I mean? <laughs> instead, of, instead, of, instead of crashing and be like, oh, there's a little contact, some contact. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm wheel, to wheel. <laughs> wheel, 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 wheel. I'm 10, 10. ten. You're, you're there for the party, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, like, once I figured out, like, what it was, like, you know, the whole, the grid walk, the pre stuff, like, you know what I mean? And then it's just, it's, long but it's fun to watch somehow you know what i mean like the first one that i did with beetle we did like internally right it was silverstone and i think there was like a 54 minute delay or something like that and we just had to kind of like banter for like 54 minutes and i was and we did it you know what i'm saying and i was just like i, I felt like it flew by ne next thing you know safety cars off and they're racing again so you know what i mean and that's another oh, you, thing. you've never had any problem talking though right like this is your oh, gift no. this is what i do you know what i mean so like you know, that made that made me feel even better because it was like, OK, this might happen in the future. You know what I mean? Like there might be some uh, incident on the course or you got to just kind of chop it up with Michelle or Katie. Shout out to Katie Osborne or whoever or will for an extended amount of time. And I'm like, I've been doing that. <laughs> Still doing that. <laughs> we'll be on the show for another 25 hours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Welcome to the Dan and the Mara show. You know what I'm saying? Features to guts and the whole gang. You know what I'm saying? We out here. Help us out with this. Dan attended the F1 event down here in Miami wearing gym shorts. Oh, I know he did. I know he did. Oh, so bad. I know he did. So yo, when they, when they, yo, when they were like, yo, this race is going to be in Miami, I was like, yo, I know Dan is there with sunglasses on. Mad gel in his hair and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just like I was vibing. embarrassing. I didn't realize it was a fashion party. I did it very poorly. Oh, look, Jessica's arrived just to laugh at me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sponsored by Rolex, yes. man. That's yeah. what it's yeah. just about. <laughs> <laughs> tell tell people tell people your story though before before just so they understand how improbable the entire thing is because it doesn't make any sense. Your story is unlike most in this business. Papi, you know that I come from Dominican uh, Republic. <laughs> uh, I'm the son of immigrant, and they're working very hard uh, to put me in position <laughs> to be successful. <laughs> so when my father told me a long time ago, Papi, you have to work hard when you're young, because when you're old, you're not going to work hard. You know, you don't want to work hard when you're old. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> no, but for real, like honestly, like my parents <clears throat> see what my parents did and sacrificed to, to you know, to for me to be able to do what I do because realistically, man, like as a first generation kid, like you don't entertainment is not a real career, bro. So like immigrant parents, they're like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like if, if forget about the immigrant stuff, like even just like working class people, like a career in entertainment is like, man, get out of here. That's not gonna happen for you, bro. Like like go to school like you know get your degree or you know what i mean like take you know the the sanitation test or whatever every municipal test there's this newspaper called the chief in new york that tells you when every like municipal job opening test or waiting list is and my 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 girlfriend at the time her mom used to just give me that shit all the time like yo get a job bro get a job because you got new sneakers i don't know how you're getting them but here, get a job so my daughter doesn't have to be with a dude that's outside, you know, with dusty cornrows and, you know, a, a probable record. What kind of jobs did you have? Oh, man, everything. Like retail. I worked at Ann Taylor Loft, Doug. Like I was selling trousers to women. Like I was, you know, I worked at a beauty supply. I worked at Lehman Brothers, RIP, you know, pre like 9-11 and post 9-11. And man, like like um, almost anything you think of but most importantly like what my career path was before tv was teaching i was teaching at junior high school 117 in the bronx shout out to my alma also my alma mater you know what i mean where i attended as a child um and that was it for me like i was just like the funny guy you know what i mean like i was just like yo we're, we're hanging around we're smoking we're drinking and i'm just cutting ass on everybody making jokes and you know then i started writing and the guy with the little tuba avatar in the corner over there, Victor Lopez, saw it. He was working at this company called Synetic Media. And he was just like, yo, this is this guy writing this thing. And this is funny. And this is, you guys might not get it because you're all 72-year-old white guys. But this is funny and it's relevant and it's important. And this dude has a, a very singular voice. So I was just like, yo. You know what I mean? Like, so, yo, you believe in me? I believe in me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let's go. Let's get it. Is that why you're so, so loyal to him as a manager and confidant? Because he discovered you? Um, Not only that, just like, you know, like, it's, re it's really rare in entertainment to find people who are just, like, straight up above board all day. Like, who are, like, you know, it's corny to say, like, honorable. I don't, like, I feel like a samurai saying that shit. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, honorable. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're, like, listen, this is the plan. This is the idea. This is the strategy. I'm not thinking about just like turning a quick buck. I'm thinking about like you like have something here. Let's develop it and let's extrapolate the shit into like, you know, 10 years from now. You know what I mean? Like, let's start with you in front of the camera and your obviously your strength is writing. So let's get like do that. You know what I mean? So it's always been like just in, uh, encouragement. It's more like a it's almost like a brotherhood. You know what I mean? So. So, yeah, you know what I mean? I would say it was it's and also like my parents like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? My mom was like, eh, niño bueno. Niño bueno. So, how have you felt so, about this guy who you love so much being blamed for the breakup in certain whispered internet corners? Oh, yeah. You know, the internet's gonna, the internet is gonna make some fanfic. You know what I'm saying? About everything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if, if, <laughs> if, if any of that stuff were true, like, you know what I mean? Like, it would be, I feel like it would be there would be more of like a big stink about it, you know what I'm saying? But I kind of feel like it came and went, you know what I mean? And then people stopped talking about it. So, you know, like I said, the internet just like doesn't know the BTS, right? Like they don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And y'all know, Dan, you coming from ESPN, you know, there's a lot of the machination behind the scenes when you're when you're dealing with big companies and big corporations that a lot of people that are just consuming the product don't see. 
I read so, your, I read some of your quotes uh, because people are real interested, right? They want to know well, what happened here. You guys haven't talked very much about it. The explanations have felt insufficient. People are heartbroken that you're not together anymore. But I have read some quotes from you saying, well, it was a different show at Vice than it was at Showtime. Showtime wasn't quite as hands-off. Yeah, it was more, I mean, like, you know, it's, it was more produced. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, it's like, you know, this is a show that doesn't need that much you know the 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 heart and soul of the show is like the banter and the the POV you know what i mean and the the go the back and forth so keep that and build around it you know what i mean so you know i feel like there was less you know vice it, it was it was weird because vice was like sarah lawrence compared to like you know some like ivy league school where it's just like yo this is what you have to do you have to be in this lane and as opposed to like the liberal arts college that has like a, a thinking room, you know what why, I mean? <laughs> why, why would they mess with you guys though? When the hardest thing to replicate, the thing that nobody can replicate is the chemistry, the chemistry. You just leave it alone. Just let them Look, cook. Who knows, man? Who knows? Like that's, that's the, that's, I feel like that's the big question, right? Like that everybody wants answered, but you know, at the end of the day, I don't even know. It's above me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just the guy on the show. You know what I mean? Like, and if, where Vice was like, you know, a very, very small crew, very small amount of people to deal with. Like, if I had any issue, I could just go, like, literally, it was three floors, bro. I could walk to anybody's door and be like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about X, Y, Z. So, you know, Vice was a, a, a totally different kind of setup and workflow. You know what I mean? And, you know, when you get to the when you get to the big machine, you know they, they kind of you know people want to put their fingerprints on stuff. Are you surprised that 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 you guys broke up? That it ended this way? I, I'm not surprised. I mean, like I'm like su like su surprised in in the way of like like oh I'm devastated or surprised like oh I'm oh I'm shocked. How did I, this happen? I would imagine at the beginning you thought, hey, this is going to last forever. This is my friend. We're doing our thing. We're really good at doing our thing. And here you are. You guys have broken up. Are you surprised by that? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because it's like, you know, when you work with somebody for so long, you, you know, you either stay in the same lane or you start to branch off and right. get into other shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, <clears throat> I got four kids. I'm I'm like very into sports and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like we have like different different interests. So there was stuff that's like, yo, and also I speak Spanish. So I'm like, yo, I, there's like a whole market that I'm not even touching. I'm kind of like restricting myself by just, you know, speaking in English and like only dealing with like American media. So I went to DR, bro. I was like on, a, on the goddamn like what, what, whatever their good version of Good Morning America is after um, interviewing uh, Travis Kelsey for the Super Bowl. And like my parents sent me the picture, like a movie on what's like a little video clip on WhatsApp with the sound blown out of guys being like, eh, este joven, este joven, es, está representando la República Dominicana, uh, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, oh, wow. Like, bro, they're talking about a show. Uh, they're talking about me on Good Morning Dominican Republic saying that I should be, <laughs> that I should speak to the president about a tourism ca campaign or some shit like that. So I'm like, yo, it's, you know, like I've always said about, and it ties it back into the F1 thing too. It's like the world is bigger than like the lower 48 states. You know what I'm saying? So just knowing that and just like seeing the reaction that Bad Bunny got at the celebrity softball game, I was just like, oh shit. I was like, okay, this is what international fame sounds like. You know what I mean? Like when they say your name over a loudspeaker and like every like, you know, Christina and Lorena in there was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> everybody was losing it. You know what I mean? And the guy from my man Simu Lu from like Shang-Chi, he did a backflip and everybody was just like, yeah, he did a backflip. <laughs> but they just said Bad Bunny and the whole place felt like it was going to collapse. So, you know, getting into that market, there's a lot of different stuff that I was just like, man, I'm, I'm like, I'm itching to do this.